Yeah, go. Uh, digital biology, like a lot of new scientific brands, means many things to many people. Okay. Um, but maybe we could uh, name three flavors of it at least. Mm -hmm. um, the first is what we might call old school digital biology, uh, emerged in the 1990s with the genome projects. Um, that was a time in the life of molecular biology in which um, just drives in computer technology made things possible in biology that weren't possible before, including creating kind of dependencies in everyday lab life um, between what you, what you do at the bench and the need to organize what you do at the bench on a computer just because there's so much data. Okay. The goal there was basically can you move from biology to bits to biology. Um, now we're in a kind of next generation of digital biology which is can you move from bits to biology to bits. That is to say can you use computers to design new living systems, can you produce those living systems in your lab and then can you uh, upload that information uh, on the internet for other people to be able to play with the things that you've built. Using digital, using information technology and the power that that uh, is available to us to uh, take what we know about biology and essentially create new forms of, of biology is an aspect of what you just described, is that fair? Right, uh, the sort of outside goal of second generation digital biology is something like computer-aided design. Okay. Can you know enough about living systems to understand how their function works in relationship to the biological underpinnings, and can you build a computer-aided design program that encodes um, the biological functions such that you could design a, a new living system without really having to know very much about the underlying biology. Is there a difference between that and what uh, is popularly now being called synthetic biology? Uh, there's a lot of overlap, and certainly synthetic biology for the last 10 years has been one of the sources and drivers for what could be called digital biology. Okay. Um, it's been the kind of brand that's attracted people from outside of biology, like computer engineers and physicists, into biology. Mm -hmm. To begin to think about how biological systems work on the model of digital systems uh, that's created a whole set of new opportunities in biotechnology. It also raises the question of a kind of limit of how far you can take analogies. So um. The way to look at this is not so much the details of what digital biology will allow. You have to assume that with the binary code that we've mastered and we have computational engines that can calculate at whatever increasing speed we can calculate, that ultimately that speed will uh, continue to accelerate on a log logarithmic basis. You match that with now the mastery that we have of digital instruction systems called DNA, which are reducible to four uh, coded items. We have then six uh, items, four letters in the way that we're using them and two numbers in the way that we're using them. If you can compute at whatever speed you want to compute and you can move those things around in a sets of instructions to be able to re-engineer anything, therefore you can engineer anything from that. And what that means then in the spirit of Craig Venter's idea of life at the speed of light, you have then the following thing that you need to think about and that is individuals ultimately being empowered to create physical biological systems capable of performing any function you'd like them to perform hmm. and transporting them and moving them in whatever way you'd like to transport and move them uh, at relatively uh, low cost right so this uh, is this without is... major facilities and so that's the thing that you need to think about right. look at this though is this you know we've sort of lived through the, the century of of physics with uh, Einstein and quantum this and quantum that and physical systems and so forth and while all of that is continuing biology now is evolving at an even quicker rate as a, as a fundamental area of knowledge than physics uh, evolved and that's leading us to the point now where you can conceptualize what you just said which is uh, being able to transform or engineer life forms to perform whatever function we want them to perform to produce whatever chemical output physical output whatever it is that you'd like them to produce, they could then have the capacity to, to do that in relatively short order. The extent to which one can move to what you're describing, which is a photonic driven, a photon driven economy where you're taking the photons from the sun, most of which are wasted uh, on the earth, most of which are reflected or wasted, and you're taking, converting those photons into electrons as you want to use them, into molecules as you want to use them through a plant or an engineered plant or biological system. All of those things are the, are the way in which everything's going to change from, from what we eat to where we get it to how it grows to how we grow it to how we fight to how we fight it to how we move forward. All, everything will change. So the notion is not so much the details of the change. It's understanding that our ability to transform information and to calculate from the tools that we have whatever transformative outcome we want is accelerating so quickly that you have to be able to anticipate and expect anything, positive or negative. Positive would be food production enhancements or medical production enhancements from 
microorganisms or, or larger scale organisms that we're, that we're driving forward. Uh, in places that have access to nothing uh, like that right now, to the negative side of that, which is the design, construction, and, and distribution of things that are not so good for us. That's you can kind of say, you look at the algae industry, and you sort of see these. The biggest variable right now is not the biological difficulty. The biggest variable are the economics of uh, petroleum-based fuels and, and the cycles of investment in advanced biotechnology relative to how feasible it is for a number of reasons. Digital biology is something that's uh, highly established, that the potential is enormous, that the uh, uh, ability to work with it is expanding as uh, exponentially quickly as is Moore's law in the realm of information science. The barriers Fat, faster than Moore's law. University labs, but in garages, and in, in hacker spaces, and things like this. If this is the same trajectory that was, you know, sort of like the hacker space, is going to become the biohacker space, Three things, what can we do to keep that uh, from very quickly becoming as big a mess, uh, security-wise, as is uh, the internet for life? So the backyard, you know, the garage or the basement uh, DIYer isn't going to produce a, a powerful biological weapon anytime in the next 10 years. Uh, they maybe, you know, they'll put something on a salad bar somewhere and kill a couple of people possibly, and that would be a tragedy. But in terms of a national security threat, I don't see it in the next few years. So I, I think I, in the long term it is huge, but not right now. I, I, think, I think Gary's making a, a, a brilliant point, and that is that you know, when the physicists at Alamogordo uh, fell to the ground in July of 1945, you know, weeping, saying, my God, what have we done? They hadn't had enough foresight or thought about the nuclear weapons that they, that they had been party to designing. And when the physicists later tried to pull back the genie that they'd let out of the bottle, they were frustrated that it was too late. It was already out of the bottle. In biology, I agree with Gary that, that we now can see from our physical past what we are capable of doing. We're now empowered on a biological front for which the consequences are even greater because we are biological and thus uh, uh, interruptible in, in interesting ways biologically. And so perhaps the way to deal with the concept of conflict, which is conflict avoidance, conflict uh, uh, resolution, and so forth, is to take a completely new approach to avoid a future war built around biological systems as opposed to physical systems by thinking about all of the design issues that we should put on the table right now relative to how to manage this particular area of science, unlike how we didn't manage physics. Physics was unmanaged, and you can see where that got us. Biology has now got more potential to have both positive and negative outcomes than physics for a lot of reasons. We have the, the foresight and the potential wisdom to be able to manage it to avoid conflict by, by, in a sense, you could even code it in certain ways. You could design certain things where certain outcomes are not possible, but you have to be able to think about that right now. It took them specialized facilities, many years, millions of dollars, lots of expertise. Mm -hmm. um, but once you publish the sequences, it takes far less capacity to be able to reproduce what they, what they do. Right. So. I think it's a huge dilemma for, say, our military, because um, if, if we, we know that there's going to be people out there who won't follow those same self-imposed restrictions, to understand what those threats are and to be able to counter them, do we have to create the monster ourselves? And I think that's a huge dilemma, yeah. uh, whether we have to do that or not, to know how to, to defend ourselves and to know what's possible. And you could argue that both ways, but I think that's a huge issue of areas purposes. So those two issues of should we be doing the monsters ourselves, and then secondly, when we do this research and find this stuff, should we make it open access? How would you think through all of the implications, and then how would you then guide the evolution of the technology so that you do not get these unbelievably inalterable, unrecoverable outcomes which you know, could affect the outcome of the entire species? That's what's at scale, outcomes, the biological outcomes, Biologically based uh, conflicts of the future uh, would be uh, wild by comparison. I'll wipe out your food supply, I'll wipe out your water, I'll wipe out your ability to reproduce, I'll wipe out your ability for your gene line to advance, I'll do this, I'll do this. I mean, I don't know how those kinds of conflicts will be dealt with, but it would be better to sort of confront them now. It seeks a uh, strategic advantage because the military never wants to be in a fair fight, everyone will say this. Fair fights are dumb, not for us, we don't want it. And the entire nature of scientific exploration is uh, we will feel free to explore. We must have that you know, freedom. And if we're going to produce results that aren't you know, pre-programmed in. So we have to change both science and entire military culture in order to be safe from digital biology. And 
and simulations will And Congress and legislation too and everything. Because I mean, the, the way Washington works is exactly the opposite of what Dr. Crow just said, but they're trying to do with real-time technology assessment. It's a wait till the problem is already manifest and you've got a huge problem. And, and, and then you try to fix it after the fact. And we do that environment and yeah. safety so, and all, everything. Yes, so you have to change uh, Washington too. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but so, but so, but so, so <laughs> those kinds of things, so I, I, my, my brain doesn't go very far in those kinds of things. Like, you know, somehow, so we have to change this, we have to change that. Everything changes. Everything always has changed. Right. Everything changes dramatically as a function of new, each new input to the system. The thing that you have to decide is whether or not you're going to be involved in intelligent design or random design. So we have all these changes, many of which are the product of random design. Right. That is, the things that we're faced with, the things that we're interacting, the way that we're working. So this notion of can we think about change in a way where it is a product of somehow intelligent forethought, even if it's only limited intelligent forethought, can you get a better net-net outcome to reduce a potential threat and thus certain conflicts by moving in that direction? And the answer would be, I hope so. Yeah. Because otherwise, randomness, random design, with these kinds of technological capabilities in the hands of X people, the, the, the outcome is, is, is the threat index is so high mm -hmm. that it means we have to change, even if it's hard. Who cares if it's hard? That doesn't mean anything. We just have to do it. We have to figure out some way to rethink this stuff before we can no longer think about it. Right. Face the moral dilemma of our scientific capability outstripping our cognitive skills. Uh, and so we're, we're moving faster in our knowledge relative to what we can do scientifically than in how we make decisions or how we should govern this or not govern that. And so one of the things I think that, that, that people don't completely grasp on the question of morality, and I'll, I'll go to Phil Kitcher, uh, philosopher, philosopher of biology, who uh, basically wrote in his book, uh, Science, Truth, and Democracy, that science being pursued without a defined objective is amoral. I have more of an observation I'd like you to respond to. Uh, some 40 years ago, a very chilling novel called White Plague was published, in which the author, who was a biologist, engineered, and the DNA was pretty accurate, a disease that killed off 90% of the female population in the world with all sorts of effects. If you haven't read the book, it's interesting to go back. The other part of my observation is we've had cyber since Marconi more than 100 years ago. Yet we still don't know what a cyber declaration of war would be required. And it's taken us a very, very long time. So what would you suggest ways to come up with some kind of a system of governance or at least anticipation of what the consequences are so that we don't get into a similar position um, as we have been with cyber where we have this interesting issue about which we really don't have a code of conduct or any kind of a deterrent framework? Well, let me uh, um, tag onto that. Geneva Conventions that prohibit the use of uh, biological agents in formal warfare between four. How do you begin to foster that same kind of deeply ingrained ethic among um, biologists and biotechnologists, especially when it's impossible to draw a straight line between what they're doing at the bench and the kinds of impacts it will have on the world? And, and a culture that is presently organized to take no responsibility for the implementation of what they develop by someone else. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we just did the science, someone else made it bad. Uh, and so it's, it's a really, really complicated outcome. I, when I was at Columbia, the comment on what it was, how will the digital biology revolution transform our warriors, like this midshipman sitting in front of me? It seems that that's going to be where it hits first when we begin to ask them to modify for battlefield performance. Uh, and I would submit, is this maybe the first step for arms control that we don't require any military member across the world to be subject to modification for battlefield performance? So, open question. Well, that's definitely not the path that we're on right now. Mm -hmm. we're, so, on the, we're on the path of maximum modification in, in whatever way necessary to produce whatever type of warriors necessary to advance. And the number of projects that are underway in that realm are, are significant and many. And so these go back to this notion of us not being sufficiently outcome in the long run, outcome oriented enough to think through all the consequences of where we're, of where we're headed. Hollywood has done a good job of showing us what some of these outcomes are, and we all pay to go to these movies and they seem really interesting. Okay, well, at some point they'll actually be real. Uh, so one has to think that through. I think we're already in a gray zone on some of this, so just pick an example which seems...